adopting AI in the workplace, it's not just about implementing new technology. It's about creating that culture that's going to embrace the change that this is obviously going to cause. And I think any new new technology, any next generation technology causes some level of culture disruption. Um, and I can see how employees can often fear AI as they, they see that as a threat other than the ways that we've been talking about it. It's empowering, it's enabling. Um, so to shift this mindset, our leaders need to foster the, an environment where AI is positioned as a partner, a collaborator, and not as a replacement. Um, this is going to require that transparency, our clear communication, which could probably also be inserted into that ACT acronym, um, and opportunities for employees to engage with AI and learn AI in a meaningful way. So I'll start off with Dan and we'll, we'll get to everybody because I know this is our, our hot topic. What strategies can our leaders employ to be building a workplace culture that not only adopts our AI technologies, but also strengthens the unique human skills that drive success? Yeah, they need to bring use cases of how it's going to make things better. I mean, if you've got an older worker there, they're, they could be petrified mm. at this point, right? They they will need some convincing that it's they're not going to be replaced um and i think the things that we that we talked about where you know people like engineers for example or you know they're not hiring engineers anymore right out of school right because they're technical things that ai can do better than they can i mean developers you know things like that um but but older workers who know the older ways and also know um, how to identify places in the processes where they want to keep it, where they want to inject AI. If you can show them some use cases of things getting better, this is the way your job gets better, then they become less fearful. And resistance is really a, it's a true thing in our workplace, um, especially around change, especially around newness. Um, Doug, what are, what are your thoughts about how organizations can successfully integrate AI while prioritizing human development? Yeah, I was just thinking about this when, when Dan was talking. I was like, man, you know, fear, fear is definitely a big thing, but how do we, how do we handle things uh, as a human, right? And, and even then, how is AI? AI is very nuanced. It's understanding nuance. And, how do, and as a human, we learn nuance as children. So maybe we bring in like a sandbox, right? So it's, it's, it's a matter of like, remove the fear by play. And the same thing we learned as kids, like you play, you learn to play with others. You learn to how the sandbox rules are. Don't don't put anything dirty in the sandbox, but make sure you share with others and collaborate with others. And that's really where we're coming into this world with with AI and AI agents and agentic agents. And and, you know, the use case example is coming into more of more of the view because of agents, because now you're moving to the task level, you're moving to the goal level of what's happening and where things are going. So when you have a goal, you am going to go use a sandbox, I'm going to learn how to play with others. And then I'm going to take that play and I'm going to take that to my friend's house, or I'm going to take that to, you know, bring bridge that into other activities and things like that. So I think, I think meeting people where they're at and driving the understanding there, because right now people, people have fear, fear of um, bad news, fear of, of being prompt injected or even themselves or just seeing like something in the news or like in a video or a TikTok or something and saying like, is that fake AI or is, is that real? Like what, what's real or not anymore? So that fear is taking a hold. And as businesses, you know, and, and enterprises that we're talking about and driving here, we have to handle that fear. We have to say, it's not Frankenstein. Please don't take the pitchfork to it and, and burn it, right? Like we need to understand and we need to drive that forward and educate but maybe education through play, maybe providing a, a a simple way, give them a portal, set them play in the sandbox, and then build in those individual acts so they can actually feel more empowered. No, I love that you you offer that option of a sandbox. I mean, we we believe in that in the data world that you know we need to have a testing environment that mirrors our production environment so that we can really stress test things that we're developing. Um, and it it seems so rudimentary because aren't we taught this as children, how to share, how to play in the same sandbox together, yet 
in on the data side of things, I see so many organizations that still have really strong data silos. They don't share their data with anybody. What's going on in sales doesn't flow through to marketing, vice versa. Um, and those are some of the biggest hurdles that companies have to get over. Uh, yep. Greg, what are your thoughts on how leaders can employ building a workplace culture uh, that's going to embrace this kind of change? So. I love this question. So I, again, I, I believe that AI, like every other world shaking technology is 10% technology and 90% people. So when we take a look at kind of what the goal is, it's really to embed AI into the culture of a company. And in order to do that, um, making it as invisible as possible so that it you can reduce much of that fear. You reduce the change in processes except for streamlining them. So in order to do this, um, there's a couple of different areas. Um, active, active, air quotes, whatever you want to do to bold that active executive sponsorship. So the leaders really must champion um, both the AI adoption as well as human development for implementing AI. They need to be radically transparent, as we talked about before, um, about every one of the initiatives. What is their purpose? What is their expected impact? They need to foster a culture of continuous learning and provide plenty of opportunities for people to do this as well as plenty of education. Um, emphasize collaboration, not just between people and organizations, but collaboration between those people and organizations and their AI agents as well. Um, recognition and reward, um, you wanna reward empathy, creativity, critical thinking, those irreplaceable human skills that, that make us unique. So essentially, when I look at this, it is a combination of a new product or new technology introduction and change management um, and treating it as such, obviously with more empathy to it because it's not nothing is that simple, but treating it not as a technology introduction, but as a new product introduction and change management is where I've seen the most success with these types of initiatives. And yeah, that's that's such the challenge for everyone today. You know, we often see in in the breadth of excitement, oh, there's a hot new tool, we, we need to get it. And then it fails to implement because we're mm -hmm. trying to bend our culture to fit a new tool or a new process instead of, instead of knowing what our culture is, having that reality check and then finding that tool that's going to support it. Uh, Sanjay, I'm curious about your thoughts. You know, what have you seen help executives foster this culture and you know possibly what are some of the hurdles that they can expect and and some solutions that uh, you can suggest to help them get over it yeah you know um, i think it's really about two key things one it's about embedding ai in your existing workflows right so not as an add-on so there's an existing business process that's working. How do you embed AI into that business processes, business process and push it to where um, the users are already working? That way you're, or you're integrating it into the way that's working and it doesn't become a, a massive shift. I think Greg touched on change management. I was at an uh, AI conference last fall and I overheard this stat. For every dollar that you spend on the technology side of AI, you have to spend $5 on change management. So how do you think about those statistics and, 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 and that data to, to minimize the, um, the change management as a after effect? Because you're gonna pay for it, right? At some point, it's either upfront um, as you're thinking about the project or later on when you, when you realize that, that people haven't gone on that, on that change curve.